morning or afternoon, my name is Miss Bex and welcome to the Forest School. I'm just going to talk you through the processes that we're going to explore. Looking at the artist today is Louise Nevelson. So I've got a task that I'd like you, if you can, to have a go at at home and you can take photographs of the work that you've completed and send them to the Forest School for us. Um, now, what you're going to need to start off with is a bunch of materials and I've gathered some bits here. So in here I've got lots of bits and pieces that I've put into a cardboard box, some PVA glue, a couple of paint brushes, some white paint, satisfying. Another box there to show you that your work doesn't have to be in such a big box as this. Okay. So I'm just going to clear this area again while I compose my Louise Nevelson. Now, in the box, I've gathered things from my recycling um, and I've also sort of had a wander around the house and garden for a few bits and pieces that I no longer need. So you've got a coat hanger. I think that's another bit of foam wire, which I might cut down there. Some rusty old secateurs. Bits out of recycling here. I've got a couple of old plastic tubs that had crisps in, slushy lid. We're looking for different shapes as well. So these two shapes work really well in the size of the box that I've got and they'll kind of create frames within a frame. There's more tennis racket, that's got some nice surface texture. So thinking about different shapes within the shapes as well. Bits of old kindling, map wash lid. So lots and lots of remnants from various places. Now, what we're going to need to start to do, once we've gathered all our objects, and make sure it does fill your box, is we're going to start composing these objects into the box. So you're going to want to start off with some of the bigger things. So I'm starting off with my tennis racket, uh, not tennis racket, table tennis racket. And I'm going to place it into the box, just like that. I'm not going to glue anything just yet, because I want to get a sense of how things fit into the box. And I've got two of these, so I'm going to pop one there. And you can see already that I'm going to maybe need to adjust this. I know that they fit. Did that fit in that way? No, it didn't. So that maybe sits over the top of that frame. Maybe even that way. And then I've got certain other bits that are slightly larger. Um, I have had a little play with this, so I kind of have an idea of where certain things might fit. And I'm just going to place that down there. Get rid of that one. So making judgments the whole time as you're building this. And that fits really nice and neatly into there. I'm not sure how much detail I'll get left of that once I start to paint over the top of it. These are great. I've got a few of these, so I can create a nice little grid with those. One, two, three. I did have more. And one, two. I might even move that. Across. and one, two there. I know I've got another one around just in amongst there somewhere. Okay, so that's my starting point. And these are nice and bulky, so they'll give some depth to my composition. I'm going to put those there. So actually at this stage, I think I probably want to start gluing some bits down otherwise I'm going to forget what I've done. Now, a good way to remember is to take a photograph of what you're happy with so that you can refer to it when you start placing them back down again, again and sticking them down. Okay, so quite a lot of glue. There's no need to be precious about this. So let's get those out of there, starting with that coat hanger. We're painting over the top of this, so it really doesn't matter if you're using a reasonable amount. And I'm going to paint onto the box Depending on how heavy your objects are, I mean, the table tennis is not very likely to be completely secure, but hopefully the paint over the top of it will help that. Use that, but um, obviously that's not something that you will have at home or unlikely to have at home. So, 
just going for materials that you're likely to be able to access. Okay, and last one's there. I'm getting the side of the wire there as well. That's the beauty of this PDA glue, we can kind of lift things off and put them back. And then I'm popping that back on there. So again, we've got that layering going on there. A few more bits and pieces here. with white paint so you'll see the finished product product once this is nice and dry okay so we're going to leave that probably overnight i think yeah to make sure that that glue is nice and stuck on it so the next stage is you've got your nicely glued piece of work and the glue is nicely dried out it should end up nice and clear and what you're going to do next is get your paint decent sized paintbrush one that's firm enough so that you can kind of get into the edges there and start your probably your first coat okay so you can see painting around the whole area and making sure that you dab into any nooks and crannies Don't worry if some things come off, you can always, well, the paint probably help fix those down too. So, no problem. In fact, now that's come off, I might just lift it off and paint underneath it. I should have given you a little warning, make sure maybe pets are kept out of um, bounds while you're doing this bit. Here she comes. Whoopsie. Angles. 
So you can see actually the um, bits, the plastic bits seem to have been less successful in the gluing, which is fine, they will end up glued, I'm sure. Maybe a problem. I just need a bit more PVA. Nice so, mixture there. Just making sure there's no custard about. Um, and ensuring that all your edges done as much as you possibly can, you've kind of got into those crevices and just worked into any of those bits of texture. There you go, that's your first coat. So two to three coats later and plenty of glue, you should have a nice solid piece of art like this, a bit of assemblage. Now, I'm really looking forward to meeting some of you in September. Enjoy your summer holidays and hopefully see you then. Bye.